On January 8, 2005, David Shaw, one of the world's greatest technical divers, entered Bushman's Hole in South Africa, a seemingly bottomless cavern descending 270 meters below the surface. But at these depths, one mistake can become your last. This is the story of David Shaw's last dive. Welcome back to a series that I'm calling Scientifically Interesting Ways to Die. In October of 2004, David Shaw had set the world record for the deepest rebreather dive in history, sinking 270 meters into Bushman's Hole. It was during that descent that he discovered the body of Deandrea, a 20-year-old diver who had vanished in the cave a decade earlier. On his return, Shaw made a promise to Drea's parents that he would retrieve the body. So on January 8th, Shaw again entered Bushman's Hole, wearing a closed circuit rebreather capable of recycling each exhaled breath, extending the duration he could stay underwater. His equipment allowed for a nine minute trip to the bottom, then 12 minutes for the rescue before a nine hour stage decompression to return safely to the surface. After one final check, he plunged into the darkness. Every 10 meters he descended added an atmosphere of pressure to his body. At 270 meters, he reached the bottom, and his torch swept out across the familiar form of Dion Dreyer, suspended where he had found him three months earlier. Shaw unfolded a recovery bag to aid in the ascent to the surface, but as he shifted Dreyer to slide him into it, tiny pockets of decomposition gas made Dreyer's body begin to rise, dislodging it from the silt that held it in place. This tangled Shaw and Dreyer in a series of lines and reels designed to help in the retrieval. Within seconds, Shaw was enveloped in a dense blinding cloud, his world collapsing to inches of visibility. At first, his training kept his breathing steady. At 270 meters down, the air he was breathing was 28 times denser than at the surface. Just inhaling was exhausting, and his lungs began to fail to keep up. Slowly, the amount of carbon dioxide in his body began to climb, and after a couple minutes, his central chemoreceptors, the primary sensors of carbon dioxide in the body, began to trigger an escalating ventilatory drive, compelling him to breathe harder and faster to restore the balance. Five minutes in, Shaw's breathing had doubled from 15 to 30 breaths per minute. This increased load consumed additional oxygen and generated further CO2. By seven minutes, tremors appeared in his hands. Footage from his helmet reveals his fingers shaking uncontrollably as he tried to work to save himself from the lines. By nine minutes, his prefrontal cortex, the part of his brain that controls judgment and coordination, was succumbing to CO2 narcosis. Footage shows Shaw entangled in the recovery line, still trying to free dry his body. His arms move with determination, then hesitation, as if he could see the problem, but his body could no longer obey him. After 12 minutes on the bottom, the moment he was supposed to begin his ascent, he let out a final strained breath and his movement stopped. Over 270 meters below the surface, the two bodies now hang in near-perfect neutral buoyancy. Separated by a decade, their safety lines connecting them by fate. Ten days later, Shaw and Dreyer were recovered, their story standing as a reminder that at that depth, even breathing becomes a high-pressure problem. If you like science and really deep dives, follow for more.